Yeah. Where is he? I don't know. Where was he? He was just on the stage. Oh, guys, Over. guys. Here we go. No, 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 no. no. I want to do something that scares me to feel alive. What did you guys do to him? Let go of those lights, buddy. He meant to swing there. Office Christmas Party starring Jennifer Aniston and Jason Bateman hits theaters today. So for his take on this and a look at the week's other new movies, let's bring in film critic Richard Krauss. Okay, Richard, that looked funny. Well, see, that's the funniest scene in the movie. So that is Courtney B. Vance, not someone who's really typically known for doing comedy. He's in a movie full of comedy heavyweights like Jennifer Aniston, T.J. Miller, Jason Bateman, Kate McKinnon, uh, Randall Park. It goes on wow. and on. There's every person who's funny so, in yeah. movies right now is yeah. in this movie. And then there's Courtney B. Vance, who we remember mostly as the straight-laced lawyer on Law & Order. He was Johnny Cochran in The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Well, he lets it rip here. And he's the only one, really, to my estimation anyway, who really gets the idea of this movie. This is the story of Clay, played by T.J. Miller. He's an office manager of a big company. He's one of the branch uh, managers. They're about to be closed down, so he thinks if we woo this big client by throwing the craziest Christmas party they've ever been to, he'll give us our business and all everyone's jobs will be saved. Uh, I won't tell you what happens in terms of all of that, but the party's not crazy enough. For my money, even though everyone's drunk, they do terrible things to the office, they burn the place down, the whole thing, it never uh, quite goes full on, except for Courtney B. Vance and that amazing velvet voice that he has and all that stuff. I wish it had been his movie, and I would have liked it more. So it's like two out of five stars. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's talk about the highly anticipated movie, Jackie, yeah. and Natalie Portman's portrayal of her. What, yeah. What's your take? Well, Natalie Portman doesn't really look like uh, Jackie Kennedy, and that doesn't matter because she, like uh, Anthony Hopkins in the Nixon movie, he didn't look like Nixon either, but they em embody them. They sort of capture the essence. So uh, you've got a, a fairly terrific performance. I think she'll probably be nominated for Golden Globes and Academy Awards and things here, uh, at the center of a movie that is much different than any kind of biography that we've seen before of, of Jackie Kennedy. This takes place in the aftermath of the assassination, and I mean in the immediate aftermath, minutes and hours and days uh, afterwards, and it shows a much different um, part of that than we've ever seen before. <clears throat> it shows the grief. It shows everything uh, that the carefully constructed image of Jacqueline Kennedy didn't allow the press to see. And uh, it can be quite moving. It's quite slow. It's kind of fragmented. It is not a traditional biography by any stretch of the imagination, but it has this terrific performance in the center of it. So for me, it's a three out of five star film. Okay, now this one, uh, reading up a, bit, a little bit about Lion, mm -hmm. it sounds... Fascinating. Yeah, for me, this is the pick of the week. So Lion stars uh, Nicole Kidman and Dev Patel, but really it's it's the, the thing that's most compelling about this is the story of Saru, Saru Berkeley, who was, uh, uh, or Beerley, who was a real person, grew up to write the book about this, grew up in a very small town in India in abject poverty. He and his brother decide to go elsewhere to look for job opportunities to maybe bring some money home for their mother. Saru's only about five or six years old at this point. He gets separated from his brother in Calcutta and he can't find his way home. And the first part of the movie, probably the first half an hour or 40 minutes of the movie kind of sets that up. And he is uh, alone, terrified, trying to make his way through this uh, you know, wild uh, place where there's more people than he's ever seen in one place be before ever in his life. It is so effective and emotional. And then cut to, later on, he is uh, in an orphanage and gets adopted by a lovely Australian couple, Nicole Kidman is the mother, mm -hmm. and grows up in Australia to become Dev Patel. And uh, he never really thinks of his past until something triggers him, and then he goes on a quest to find out what actually happened. Where's my brother and where is my mother? Uh, this is a really moving uh, uh, movie that, you know, has Oscar winners like Nicole Kidman in it, but really it's all about the character uh, Saru, both in the young and older form. How many stars? Four to five. Wow, wonderful. Okay, time for one more. Miss Sloan. Miss Sloan, drain the swamp. That's what, <laughs> that's what uh, sort of the message of of Miss Sloan is, is Jessica Chastain as a lobbyist. She is someone who will take on almost any uh, topic. It doesn't really matter to her what it is, except 
She will not work for the NRA. She will not work for the gun lobby. Uh, and in fact, she actively works against them. And this movie is all about the machinations that go on behind the scenes, what happens when they're trying to get a law passed and how the lobbyists work. Uh, Jessica Chastain is terrific in this. Um, I love that uh, she is describing the movie as the personification of an ice cube, which Ooh. means that she is very icy, cold, calculating, mm -hmm. at least on the surface. We find out more later on. Uh, and then it works up to a climax, which is one of the most ridiculous climaxes that I've seen in a movie in a long time. Really? The reveals that happen here um, are not worthy of Aaron Sorkin, which kind of feels, uh, this story sort of feels West Wingy, sort of Aaron Sorkin-ish. Wasn't written by him, but it feels that way. Um, it's more like an Agatha Christie reveal at the end. It feels kind of old fashioned. It feels uh, like a bit of a cheat. So it kind of undoes all the good work that this movie did leading up to the last 10 minutes or so. For me, it's two and a half out of five stars. Oh, sounds like a bit of a shame. Okay, Richard Krause, thanks for popping by. Thank you. Appreciate it.